Well, uh, welcome to Share the Holy Spirit Conference 2020. And uh, my name's Mike and this is Simon. We're uh, leaders here with uh, the Servants of Jesus community. And uh, we're just so happy to have you with us to spend this time over the next couple of days exploring the theme of Arise, which is from Isaiah chapter 60. And this conference we've been uh, hosting since 1995. And uh, this is the first time ever though that yeah, we've been time. online, uh, totally online and uh, coming to you in your lounge room or wherever, wherever you are. And we're still really excited about uh, what the Lord wants to do, what he's going to say to us through, uh, we have a number of wonderful speakers uh, coming up over the next couple of days. And yeah, we're just really looking forward to what the Lord wants to impart to us and how he's preparing us for these times that, um, that we're in and that we're about to yeah. enter. Yeah, it's gonna be good, Mike. And uh, yeah, this is obviously unusual for us, first time we've been fully online, <clears throat> but mm. We really do believe that God has something for us. Uh, and uh, the wonderful thing being online, people can watch from anywhere in the world, any, all parts of Australia. That's one of the uh, benefits mm. of doing this. And, uh, you know, we really encourage you just to really seek the Holy Spirit uh, and what He has mm. for you through each talk and each session. And we believe uh, God's going to really bless everybody watching and uh, it's going to be a great time. So thanks for joining us and we... We look forward to journeying with you over these couple of days. Yeah, we'll be hosting a few of the sessions and some other uh, of people from our community will host uh, a couple of the sessions as we go along. Uh, we're going to start, though, this morning uh, with uh, a, just a short message, just um, four or five minutes from Joe Cherkop. And uh, Joe's the convener of the conference. It was his uh, vision back in the early 90s to host this conference. Joe's the senior leader of the Servants of Jesus community and he, he would just like to introduce the conference to you, the theme this year, and just pray with you just to get things started. So just over to Joe. Good afternoon. Uh, I want to welcome you to our conference to share the Holy Spirit. Once again, it's our 25th anniversary, 26th one I think it is. And uh, we're very, very grateful to be able to put this conference on under the circumstances that prevail. So firstly, um, just a little bit about the vision. It started around, I think the first one was in 1995. We got the theme, Share the Holy Spirit, because there was a theme for the Sydney Olympics at that time called Share the Spirit. We thought we would do something like this by using that name, Share the Holy Spirit. So we got permission to do that. It was an attempt to um, ride on what was going on in Sydney at the time, as well as we, f we felt the Lord wanted us to say it, uh, to, to, um, to start these conferences. And, and these conferences were unique from the beginning because they were ecumenical and it's about loving the whole church. And I've got a quote here from uh, Mike Bickle uh, about... about the church, and he said, the Lord loves the whole church, every denomination, every congregation that names his name in truth. And so this conference is an ecumenical conference. That means there'll be people from different theological persuasions speaking. Sometimes they may not be in line with what we believe personally, but if we're to be part of this conference, we have to sort of enter in and um, let certain things go to the keeper while maintaining the wonderful the positive of the Holy Spirit that every speaker will uh, impart to us. Um, the theme this year is from Isaiah 61 and 2. And, uh, you know, the theme here at this time, uh, um, if, we, if we look at that text, it talks, it talks about thick darkness covering the earth. Well, certainly we have that at this time. Arise and shine. That's what the Lord is calling us to. And in order to do that, there must be repentance. There must be uh, 
are calling out to the Holy Spirit to wake us out of our spiritual slumber in the Western church. Certainly in the Western church, I can't speak for other areas of the world, but in the Western world, I think we need to be pulled out of our slumber. And so it is exciting. Um, it's different. It, we put, we uh, have something for the tots, we have something for the youth, and we have something for everyone else. Normally we have four conferences going on at once. We also have um, uh, young adults as well. But this year it will just be our children as well. And this year just be those three. So I might just take this opportunity now uh, to pray and to ask the Holy Spirit to come because we desperately need him. I need him personally. We need him as a community. Our nation needs him and the world needs him. So, Father, we thank you that you have sent your spirit already, but we call on you to send him once more unto us. We desperately need him to reveal a greater depth of Jesus to us. Lord, we thank you, Father, that we need to experience your love as a father and we can only do that through your Holy Spirit. So we ask you once more, send your spirit upon us. Let, us, let, him, let him enlighten our hearts. Let him warm what is cold and, 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 and warm what is frozen in our life and bring us, Lord, to a place where we can receive your word where we can, Lord, move forward in your spirit, where we can be open to the gifts of the spirit, where we can reach out to those who don't know your son, Jesus. God bless and thank you. Okay, well, welcome back. Thanks so much, Joe, for that introduction. And a big part of the conference has always been worship. Mm. Um, we've really been blessed over the years with uh, some wonderful worship and God's God's presence really coming through the worship. So again, we'll be doing this online this time. So we're just going to cross now to uh, a couple of our, our worship team, I think Brittany and Declan, just to, uh, to have a time of worship. So we just, I think this will be for about 15 minutes or so. So we just encourage you again, wherever you are at home, just to open yourself to the Holy Spirit, to enter in the best you can to uh, this time of worship and to, as you do that, just to be preparing your heart for the message that we're going to hear this morning. So, so just God bless you. And we'll just hand you over to Britt and Declan for the worship in Jesus name. Amen.
Welcome back from that time of worship. And now we're about to go to our, our first talk. And if you have your conference booklet here, the Arise Conference booklet, 
or if you don't have a booklet, you can follow on our the Servants of Jesus website. You'll see the list of the different speakers at uh, different times. And this will be our, our first session, uh, Speaker for the Day. And we're, we're about to hear from John Arnott. And just before we hear from John, Mike, I'm just going to introduce him. We're really very privileged to have John Arnott speaking to us today. And I'm just going to just read a little bit of information about him. Many of you will know of John. Uh, and, uh, but I just want to, for those who may not know him, give a little bit of background. So John and his wife, Carol, uh, are international speakers. They have a ministry in revival in the context of the Father's saving and restoring love. As the Holy Spirit moves with signs and wonders, they've seen millions of lives touched and changed through God's power and Christ, Christ's love. Now, John attended the Ontario Bible College, which is now called Tyndale College, in the late 1960s and then pursued a successful career in business. In 1980, while on a missionary trip to Indonesia, John and Carol responded to God's call on their lives for full-time ministry. Upon returning, they started Jubilee Christian Fellowship in Stratford, Ontario in 1981. The Lord then called them to Toronto in 1987, where Catch the Fire Toronto, which was formerly Toronto Airport Christian Fellowship, was started. In January 1994, through a sovereign outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Revival exploded into protracted meetings and Catch the Fire Toronto came to the world's attention as a place where God was meeting with His people. Mike, I was mm. privileged to actually go there. You've been there too, haven't you? To I was there yeah. in 2004. And yeah. I remember when you were there, you had an encounter with the Father's love while you were there. I did. It was an amazing place to visit and... Uh, but be above and beyond everything, there was just um, a presence of the Lord there and an impartation that happened. I, I certainly experienced it. Yeah. And you've been there as well. Yeah, I've been there as well. And uh, I was there with a group, small team from Australia. And I remember uh, at the end of one of the sessions, uh, the team from Australia, we asked John to pray with us, John Arnott to pray with us. And he, mm. he just great, gave a great blessing. Uh, he said, God, bless all these Aussies and... The Holy Spirit just fell upon us and we were just on the floor uh, and all of us were just rolling around laughing. But we received a great impartation of the Holy Spirit. And Mike, that's mm. what John is known for. He's known for his teachings on the Father's love, mm. grace and forgiveness and the Holy Spirit's power. Uh, he continues to impart wise counsel and provides a strong framework for those who want to see the power of God manifest in their church. Carol has embraced the message of intimacy soaking and healing and freedom of hearts. Her desire is to see those in the kingdom become lovers of Jesus Christ and come into that place of intimacy, health and dependence on Him. And Mike, I believe that as uh, we watch this talk today, John's doing two talks, one today and I think one on the final day, I believe that we're going to receive this impartation of God's love, the impartation of the presence of God and uh, just as John speaks to us. So we pray now and uh, that you'd be blessed mm. and that you will hear everything that God wants to say to you personally mm. through this talk today. Well, hello, all you dear friends there in Sydney, Australia and the surrounding area. Um, you guys are just coming out of your winter time and into your spring. And we're just coming out of our summer into our fall season over here, but it was a beautiful day. And anyway, I just bring you greetings from Toronto and all our staff and our friends here, and we're delighted to be able to talk to you for a few minutes uh, at this wonderful conference that's now online. And so Carol's around with me, and she sends her love. And uh, of course, I'm John Arnott from Toronto, Really sorry I can't be with you guys, but here we are on a video presentation with some exciting topics that I think you're going to love. And so let's get ready for the Lord to break in with Revelation 
impartation and bringing his amazing kingdom because he wants to touch the entire world. Yeah, I want to talk to you today about something that occurred to me um, a number of years ago. And, the, and so the message, I call it uh, the three journeys. And we're not just on one journey in this Christian life, but there are three distinct journeys. Uh, inward for you, for God to do a work in you, and then upward for you to respond to him and love him, and then, of course, outward where we have a mission in life and we share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I, I discovered that most people um, really didn't pay a whole lot of attention to that inward journey because they were so focused on their mission and the outward journey. And yet that inward journey is so very, very important. It sets the, it just sets the tone as to how you are going to relate to others. Jesus made a statement one time and he said this, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's, that is to say that the, the truth and the life that's stored up in you is what you're going to end up talking about. And so if there's things in your life that color your vision and your words, and I'm talking about negative things, we want all the positive things like more faith, more love, more joy, and all that good stuff. But what about the hurt and the pain and the shame and the fear and the unforgiveness and all of that kind of stuff? That is what I call the inward journey. And that's an inward journey for you to really uh, press into to God, realizing that none of us are perfect and that those issues of the heart that we're ashamed of and that we don't want to talk about, uh, those things uh, we want to deal with so that they stop hindering as much as we can our, our mission and our work for the Lord in this life. And so we discovered that the inward journey was very, very important. And uh, when the Spirit came in power on all of us in January 1994, it was a life-changing encounter we had. We saw the power and the glory of God. And we noticed it was going very deep in the hearts and lives of people. And there was great change happening as he set many of us just free from all the stuff I just mentioned, fear, shame, pain, hurt, unbelief, anger, unforgiveness, all that kind of stuff. And when God draws near by the power of the Spirit and you have an encounter with him, it just puts a different perspective on uh, what we're wanting to, to portray in our own heart because freedom comes. And the things that held us back or made us afraid or made us take a back seat or whatever, now they get out of the way so, so we can go forward like never before. And we had a very helpful survey done, and it was back in the summer of 95, a sociologist named Margaret Paloma uh, from the University of Akron, Ohio, she came to me and said, John, I wanna do a survey of all these people here that are uh, falling down on, on the floor and shaking and laughing and crying and everything else they're doing. I want to survey them and see what they're really, the fruit of all of that is. And you know, at first, I didn't know if I wanted her to do that because I thought, I don't want some psychologist telling me that the whole thing is mass hysteria and the power of suggestion and things like that. But Anyway, as we talked more, I felt the Lord say, go ahead, let her do it. Well, Margaret surveyed about 1,000 people 
was 989, I believe, to be exact. And she had this whole questionnaire for all of them. And it, it was a full survey, young, old, wealthy, not so wealthy, uh, educated, not so educated, just uh, a whole cross-section of the people that were coming. And here's what she found. 93% said, as a result of my encounter on the floor, I am more in love with Jesus than I have ever been in all my life. Wow, was that ever music to my ears. And then secondly, the second most important one of her questions was this. 87% said, I'm more excited about sharing my faith in Jesus than I have ever been in all of my life. Well, friends, that was like music to my ears. I was like, wow, that, that is one of my favorite scriptures, Matthew 22, 37. Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And see, when the Spirit of God comes upon you, there is revelation. First, you realize how much he loves you. And second, you realize how important you are to him. And as you become secure in the love of God, now all your fears and phobias and hangups and all that kind of stuff begin to just fade away and are replaced by the truth of God's love for you. And we just saw that over and over and over again. And the Holy Spirit brought a deeper revelation of the love of God. So that's, that's one of my main messages. You know, I love to talk about the love of God because it was so life-changing for me. And uh, I want us to consider for a moment the baptism of Jesus um, when he came to the Jordan and he was baptized by John. Uh, some call it the central event in Scripture, where Jesus, up until this time, had been preparing for ministry, but he was functioning as a carpenter for the most part, and he never did any miracles, and nobody knew who he was really, but when he came to John, uh, both John and Jesus knew what was coming. And John knew that the one on who you see the Holy Spirit come, he's the one. And so Jesus came to John, and John immersed him in the Jordan River, and immediately the Spirit of God came heaven open, the Spirit fell, and he who had always been filled with the Holy Spirit received an anointing and an empowering to be launched into ministry. And in addition to that, the Father spoke from heaven words of affirmation when he said, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So, those needs in the heart of Jesus were so met with supernatural encounter and affirmation of the Father. And I think you and I need that too. I think that when we have a divine encounter, it speaks volumes to our heart. And we know that we know that we know that we are encountering the loving presence of God Almighty. So that's why I say the inward journey is so important. And then to hear the Father speak, you are my beloved son, and I'd love it if he would speak that to you right now. So just tune in to him for a moment. Maybe even hold your hands up to him and say, Lord, speak to me because your servant is listening. And hear those loving words spoken to you, you are my beloved child, and in you I'm well pleased. Because once you believe in Jesus, uh, that he is your savior, and he has paid your debt, so you know you owe nothing to perfect justice, now you can enter into the Father's heart of love and receive that loving affirmation. 
And so it's amazing what happened to Jesus after that. Of course, we know he went and he was tested in the wilderness for 40 days. And then he came out of there fully uh, anointed with the Holy Spirit and launched into his ministry of signs, miracles, and wonders and made such a splash across the face of the earth that the earth is still reeling for what he did in those three and a half years of ministry. Well, it was the coming of the Holy Spirit that made all the difference to him right there. Uh, Jesus wanted to model that for you and I, that we need that impartation. And I I just want to cover this a little bit because I think many people would say, hey, forget you, it's not about you, it's all about helping others, it's all about getting on with the mission in life. But I don't believe that. I think we are on three journeys, not just one or even two. And so when you get your own heart in line with the kingdom of God and the kingdom of love, Now it's much easier for the Holy Spirit to use us powerfully and trust us with more. And so I want you to press in on your own spiritual journey. You know, many people came to Toronto because they heard God was showing up in power and they wanted the power of the Holy Spirit. But friends, it's more than that. It's he wants your heart. He wants you to fall in love with him. And the whole thing is this gigantic love affair. And so never separate the power of God from the love of God. When we read the verses in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13, and 14, we see chapter 12 is all about the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. In chapter Uh, 14 is about the uh, tongues, speaking in tongues and prophesying. And yet sandwiched right in the middle is this love chapter that says, hey, you can do it all. You can have faith to move mountains even. You know, I'd be impressed with that. If you, one of you moved a mountain, I'd be like, wow, well done for trusting God and doing that. But that verse says, Even if you have faith to move mountains and you do not have love, you are nothing. That's a powerful statement, nothing. So never separate him from his love. This love is the key that enables you and I to travel on these three journeys. And so that takes a totally different form now. It's not striving for achievement but it's loving for relationship and because of relationship. The inward journey uh, becomes one of letting God's love come in and heal and restore. And I know when we become secure in that love, we'll open up and admit to him some of the things that are wrong. So I see that as a first step. I believe in inner healing. I believe it's really biblical. People sometimes toss that out. But you know what? If you can be sick in your body, you can be sick in your heart as well. And yet people are insecure about being honest about their own personal needs. And I find that when you have a divine encounter with the love of God, and you realize how deeply he loves you, then it becomes much easier for you to say, right, I I know I'm not perfect. Lord, if there's any way that uh, I can be set free for greater fruitfulness or whatever, I'm up for it. Come into my heart and show me. So the inward journey is one of impartation of all the good things of God love, joy, peace, power, authority, all of that, but also taking out any negativity, the the fear, the shame, the pain, the anger, the unforgiveness 
Friends, I urge you to get rid of that stuff. Carol and I wrote a little book called Grace and Forgiveness. And forgiveness is one of the most powerful um, breakthroughs you can have because it holds you up. And, And the scriptures are clear. If you and I don't forgive, then the Lord doesn't forgive us. I mean, when we read it in the Our Father and the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our debts, our sins, just as we forgive those who sin against us. Then it goes on to say at the conclusion in in Matthew chapter 6 that if you do not forgive, um, then neither will your heavenly Father forgive you. And that's not because God's mean, of course, but it's because there's only two options. You can have law or you can have grace. You can have mercy or you can have justice. And I urge you, take the mercy journey. And so this is all the inward journey that that all of us need. And you know what? It's not a, hey, I went on a weekend course and I came out perfect. That doesn't happen. It takes years and years of inviting the Holy Spirit to keep uncovering stuff. This is a lifelong journey, friends. You and I letting the Holy Spirit come and uncover more and more, take us to a deeper level so that we can be emptied out of anything that's hindering and then let him fill us up with that which is strengthening and encouraging. And I'd like to just pause for a moment and pray for anyone who's who's tracking with me right here. And, and let's just let's just take a moment and pray together. Father, I thank you for the inner work of grace that you want to do by the power of the Holy Spirit. I ask you to come upon these friends, remind them of family members or acquaintances that really hurt them or betrayed them, and they need to forgive those people because it is slowing them down. Lord, unforgiveness is a luxury that we just cannot afford. And so in the name of Jesus, come and help us. Remind us of those who we need to forgive. My father, my mother, my siblings, my neighbors. And some of it is somewhat trivial as an adult looking back, but then some of it is very serious. People have been raped, they've been abused, they've been uh, cheated, lied about, all those kinds of things that is very, very hurtful. And Lord, I just send the anointing into these friends right now. Fall upon us, Holy Spirit, together. In the name of Jesus, and let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And just to follow up on that, I encourage you to Read the story about the unmerciful servant in Matthew's Gospel, uh, chapter 18. And we have the story there where Jesus was asked by Peter, how many times should I forgive my brother? Uh, Up to seven times? And Peter's like expecting a a pat on the back for that. Am I getting it, Lord? But the Lord's like, no, Peter, not seven, but 70 times seven. This is a lifestyle. Whenever things come up where people do it wrong and do you wrong, uh, may the first thing be, Lord, I forgive because I don't want baggage to start accumulating in my heart and messing things up. All right, the next thing the Holy Spirit wants to do is the upward journey. And this now is not for you, not for your healing, not for your spiritual growth and development, but this is for him. Uh, When we respond to the revelation of his love, he then wants to come and reciprocate that love. And so we have this divine romance going on. And you can get together with one or two friends and begin to worship him. 
Do you know in John chapter 4, it says, the Father is seeking those who will worship him. But it doesn't stop there. It says, in spirit and in truth. And so we want to worship him in truth, not in heresy, not in self-centeredness, but we want to worship him in the spirit and in truth. And so, Holy Spirit, will you come now and help us get our eyes heavenward where we can worship Jesus with all of our heart and with all of our soul? Oh, it's amazing what that upward journey can can bring us for. And I've just watched the Holy Spirit uh, come upon worship and take us to like heavenly places in him. Do you know, to, to fall in love with someone that you cannot see and perhaps do not hear, that's, that's a bit of a challenge for a lot of people. And I remember wondering, how do I do that? Lord, in, in that great commandment of Matthew 22, 37, you said, this is the first and great commandment. Love the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. The second's like it. Love your neighbor. And thirdly, love yourself. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And I'd like to start there for a bit because many, many people we find really do not love themselves. They have been told maybe for years that they're good for nothing. They'll never amount to anything. And they keep wishing they were someone else. And you know, that's not what God has for you. He has made you a unique person. And you can do things that no one else can do. So I want you to make a decision that you're going to love yourself from now on. And just hold your head up high and say, Jesus loves me. And the Bible says God so loved the world. That that includes me. If I'm good enough for God, I must be good enough. I choose to love myself from today on. And I'm not talking about some kind of misguided uh, self-centeredness. No, I'm talking about in a biblical way, realize God created me in his image and after his likeness. And so I must be okay and must be good for something. And he has redeemed you. And he wants you to love yourself so that you can have capacity to love other people, and more importantly, love him. Because that's the ultimate. Love the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul and strength. It's it's a wonderful thing when the power of God comes on you and you're awash in the love of God. And you're just so full, you don't know where to turn. And you're almost giddy with it. Peter said, it is joy unspeakable, it's full of glory, and the half has never yet been told. And so, oh Lord, I pray that you will come and and just help us by the anointing to fall in love with you. And see, the upward journey is is rooted and grounded in love, but it's, it's not just singing in worship, but it's actually loving him with all of our heart and with all of our soul. And you and I can just choose to do that, whether we feel it or whether we don't. I love it when we really feel it intensely, but it's not always like that. And there are times when you just get up and do it anyway because it is the right thing to do. And remember that scripture in John chapter 4, The Father is seeking for those. He's looking for you to worship him in spirit and in truth. And so why don't we pause and pray just for a moment right there and say, Lord, will you come 
and help me worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, I really, really want to get to know you. And it's only right that me as your creation can say thank you for the life you have given me and for the purpose that you have planned for me. Lord, I, I want to be about my Father's business, and I want to come to you full of the anointing and full of the Holy Spirit. And I ask right now, Lord, as these dear friends are listening to this teaching and watching this talk today, that you'll begin falling upon us all, Holy Spirit. I feel your anointing right here. Kingdom of God, come. Will of God be done. Lord, carry us up, up, up into that glory realm of the Holy Spirit where we can worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh, my Lord. You're just so fantastic, Jesus. I give you praise. I give you thanks. Lord, there is none like you. You're amazing, amazing, amazing in every way. Here I am, Lord. I've come to worship you in spirit and truth. Put songs in my heart. Help me to wake up with a song. Help me to go to sleep with a song. Help me to gaze heavenward in the name of Jesus and get my eyes fixed on my final destination. Thank you, Lord. When, when Carol and I first got the theology for a revelation of the Father's love, it was when a dear man named Jack Winter came to us, and Jack started out reading one of my very favorite verses in the Bible, and that is John chapter 14. And as he read John 14, uh, verse 7, it says, it's, it says this. I'm sorry, verse 6. Jesus said to Thomas, who said, well, Lord, we don't, e we don't even know where you're going. How could we, how could we know the way? And, and Jesus responded with, with John 14, verse 6. He said to him, I am the way. I'm the way, Thomas. I'm the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And, you know, Jack Winter stopped right there, and he asked us all a question. He said, so where is it we're going? Well, I said, well, we're going to heaven, Jack. And he said, okay. And someone else said, yeah, we're going to eternal life. All right. But what does the scripture say? And so he says, let's read it again. No one comes to the Father except through me. And he looked up, he looked over his glasses, and he said, we're going to the Father. That's where we're going. That's our destination. And do you know I had a brief moment where I didn't want to do that because I had a concept where God the Father was this legalistic perfectionist, and if you didn't please him in every way and tick every box, you were in trouble, and he was displeased with you. And so it's like, oh, my goodness. But then Jack went on to say, no, everything Jesus did, he did because he was taught by the Father and led by the Father. So he's, he's saying, the works that I do, they're not my works. They're the works of him who sent me. The words that I speak, they're not my words. Uh, they're, 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 I only say what I hear the Father saying, and I only do what I hear the Father uh, doing, what I see the Father doing. And so it, it just made it so real that behind all the good things that Jesus said and did was the Father and his heart for humanity as it was expressed and taught to us by Jesus Christ. The Father loves you, friends, and he gladly wants to receive uh, your worship for him. So fall in love with him. That's 
That's the great commandment. Fall in love with him and never doubt his love, no matter what life throws at you, and just keep on going for all of eternity. So now you're on those two journeys, see? Uh, inward for you, for healing and equipping. Upward for him so he can receive and, and just enjoy your love. And really, you could ask the question, God's given us so much. What does he get out of this? Well, he gets you, and it thrills his soul um, when he sees that you are loving him. I was talking to my daughter, Lori, earlier, and she was all excited about her granddaughter, which is my great-granddaughter, Isabel. And Isabel is so happy to see her every time and loves her grandmother. And see, that's, that's the dynamic that is so thrilling for God Almighty. When he sees that you and I really, really love him and that we're thrilled to be with him, that's, that's his reward right there. That's what's in it for him. Well, finally, friends, there's our, the outward journey, and that's our mission in life. And I want to talk to you about the, the outward journey a little bit. <coughs> um, we have the great commandment that I referenced from Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven: 37. Love the Lord with all your heart and all your soul. But then we have the Great Commission, which is in the end of Matthew's Gospel, and it's in all the Gospels, really, where he says, uh, go into all the world and make disciples of the nations. And you and I are called to go out on mission and share the good news. And in Matthew 24, the, 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 the statement is made there by Jesus that the, the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to the whole world, and then the end will come, to the whole world and to every nation, and then the end will come. Friends, you and I have work to do. We're not saved by works. We're saved by faith in Jesus Christ, that he came paid our debt when he died on the cross. We owe nothing once we simply believe, nothing to do except believe. But then as a result of the transformation that happens when we believe, now he sends us out to share this good news with a very broken and a very hurting world. And let me just say this, friends, that um, this is, absolutely of the utmost importance. Because you see, heaven is real. Hell is also real. Um, the rewards in heaven are very real. But also the, the judgment of God is very real. And people vote with their feet. They vote with their actions going through life. And this whole life that we live, this is a proving ground and a testing ground that's basically saying, are you going to do the right thing or not? And when people consistently choose the wrong thing, they're, they're voting for where they want to spend eternity. And sometimes people say, well, I want to be a good person. They try to be good. But to try to do that without Jesus, it's almost like, sorry, but not good enough. There is no other name under heaven given to men whereby we must be saved. And that's Jesus' purpose in coming to the earth. He came to seek and to save those that are lost. And so until we invite him into our lives and we're washed and cleansed, forgiven, we're born again, um, we're, we're missing out so much. And so once you receive Christ into your heart, and I pray that many of you that are watching uh, this, this presentation, if you have never invited him into your heart, you need to do that right now because 
uh, don't wait. Don't, don't leave it another day. It's so important that you have your sins forgiven and know it in your heart of hearts. And then you get to help uh, someone else. And so all of us as Christians have a mission where we are to tell others, family, friends, acquaintances, and even strangers, that Jesus Christ is the way and the truth and the life. And like he said, no one comes to the Father except through him. So this is our outward mission, friends. And you know, there can be other aspects to it, like helping the poor, feeding the hungry, and uh, training and equipping and teaching and prayer ministry and uh, healing ministries and all the rest of it. But fundamentally, all of us are called to share the good news of Jesus Christ. See, Jesus came to seek and to save that which is lost. That is the gospel message. And uh, you you don't just accept him by hearing about him a little bit. There are people who've heard of the Queen of England, but they don't know her. They've never had tea with her. There are people who know the Prime Minister of Australia, but they, they know about him, but they don't know him personally as a person. And Jesus, this wonderful Savior of ours, he wants to get to know you as a, a person intimately. And uh, he wants you to get to know him so deeply that you cannot hold back and share it with the world around you. That's preaching the gospel, sharing the good news. And if you're going to preach it, you need to live it. So say, Lord, help me to walk the walk and not just talk the talk. And I think it's helpful if we just appreciate for a moment our destination, where we're going. You know, I've said many times, I think a person needs to be somewhere around 50 years old before they start to figure out, you know, life is short. And they're like, 50? How did I get here? I'm 50. Well, life goes by very quickly. The next thing you know, you're 60, then 70, then 80, and then it's over for you. And now what? And there is an excellent book out now called Imagine Heaven. It's written by a pastor from Texas named John Burke, and he examined about a thousand stories of people who had a near-death experience. And, you know, he found that they all saw basically the same 12 fundamental things. There's more than 12, but 12 main ones. They, they went through a, a light tunnel. They came out the other side into this gloriously beautiful place, and they met the man in white light. And the Christians knew that it was Jesus. And, but they all saw the same thing, whether they were Hindus or Muslims or atheists or whatever they were. And this man in white light, he would give you a life re- review and show you what you did with your life and then ask you a question, how did you do with love? And people go, um, um, pretty good, I think. Well, how did you do with loving me? Uh... I'm not sure. How did you do with loving your wife? How did you do with loving your children? And in this book, there was a story of a pastor named Steve Shogren that Carol and I know, and we knew him like 20 years ago, but I didn't know his story. He'd gone into the hospital for a routine gallbladder operation, and everything went horribly wrong, and they cut his aorta twice, and... And so he flatlined, and they were desperately trying to figure out where is the blood loss going and what's wrong and trying to save his life. So he went into the surgery thinking 
Well, it'll be like a, an hour surgery and I'll wake up in recovery about three hours later and I'll get a Diet Coke and go home in the morning. Well, to his shock and amazement, he woke up on the ceiling of the operating room and he looked down and he saw the scene and he sort of recognized that that's me they're working on. And he, he's sort of like, God, what's going on? And so the Lord comes to him, but he doesn't explain anything. He doesn't reassure him, say, hey, you're going to be okay. No. He says, Steve, how did, how did you do with love during your lifetime? And he's like, well, what do you mean, Lord? He said, well, did, how did you do at loving me? So I love you, Lord. He said, how, how about your wife? How did you do loving your wife? He said, oh, I love my wife. And then he said, how about your children? How did you do it loving your children? And he said, well, I love my children, Lord. And then the Lord said this to him, how can you say you love your children when you cannot even name for me one of their friends? And right there and then he realized he'd been so busy being super pastor being studying, going to the gym, doing this, doing that, that when his children came home, he's working on his computer. They'd say, hi, dad, and this and that. This is my friend, Mary Jane. Hey, how's it going? Without hardly even looking up. And none of that ever registered with him. And he realized, wow, when it came to really caring and really loving, I haven't done so well. Well, the Lord sent him back to earth. He did live through it after two or three times dying and, and being resuscitated. And he was in a, a wheelchair for a year because it did so much damage to his, his legs and his muscles and this and that. And uh, he had a colostomy on his side and, and just all these horrible things. But during that time, as he had to learn to walk all over again and deal with brain damage and other things, he discovered the importance of love. And so he wanted to love the Lord now with all of his heart, all of his soul. He wanted to love others as well, just for who they are, because they were people made in the image of God. And then thirdly, he wanted to love himself. Hey, I'm not just a machine that runs a big church and hopefully wins the loss, but there's a heart in this thing and there's a soul in it. And I want, I want to be led by the Lord and do this thing his way. And so friends, we're on three journeys together. And I want you to just sort of lift your hand to heaven and say, Lord, I want to go on those three journeys. I want the kingdom of God to impact my heart with spiritual encounter and fill me and equip me with all the good things of heaven and then take out all of the bad things and the junk and the baggage and the this and the that that I have. And please don't be defensive about your shortfalls and your baggage because it's only just hindering you. What you want to do is uh, say, Lord, here I am. I'm, I know I'm not perfect, but I'd love to move deeper into your heart and closer into you. That's the, that's the inward journey for you. And I find that people are reluctant to go for inner healing until they've had a revelation of the Father's love and they know that they know that they know they are loved by him. And so you're loved by him. And let him give you that revelation this evening, this day, this conference, so that you can be filled with all the fullness of God and then get so full of the anointing that you must share it with people. Oh, I'm telling you. There have been times Carol and I have gotten so full, we didn't know what to do with ourselves. And so as we end this session, I want to pray for you.
that the Holy Spirit of God will come and get you soundly filled with the Spirit of God. And so that you drink deeply. You know, Jesus in John 7 said, if anyone is thirsty, let him come unto me and drink. And out of his innermost being, rivers of living water will flow. In the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus, rivers of living water will flow. God in heaven, come and fall upon your people right now. Mm, I just see some of you just feel like your strength is failing. Just receive it. Don't worry about what others think. This is your moment. Take the anointing right there in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask that the fiery love of God would fall upon these dear ones right now in Jesus' precious name. Kingdom of God, come. Will of God, be done in their lives, on earth, in Australia, just as it is in heaven. And I pray that you will fill us with all of your fullness, Lord. Oh, with all of your fullness. And as we get ready for the next session, I pray, Lord, take us on these three journeys with you. I want more for me. I want more for you. And I want more for them, those others that you've called me to minister to in the name of Jesus. Release the glory on them right now, Father. Let a huge tsunami wave just come upon this this wonderful group of people. Bless them abundantly, I pray, in your mighty name. Amen. Well, uh, welcome back. And and. John, thank you so much for for that teaching uh, and for what you've imparted to us uh, through that session. Um, just a just a wonderful uh, experience to share that time with you. And so I'm just a great talk to start yeah. start the conference, Mike. And we were just talking about it, how John he just carries the Father's love, doesn't he? I mean, he, does. he you know even as he is just sharing that talk, you're you can feel the Father's love coming through. And I think that's just that prayer at the end. Uh, wasn't mm. it great just to receive that? And um, yeah. that's what it's like. And it's it's really, you know, God's raised up John and Carol to be carriers of the, the love of the Father. And wherever they go, they're releasing that love. And, mm. you know, my, I, I just loved how he brought it back to, you know, starting with that inner life, the inner change of us, you know, yeah. and then that upward journey, knowing the Father and then the outward. I thought that was just a great, Great thing that he was saying there. Yeah, I'm. I'm really uh, pleased that he that he touched on on that as he did because um, I think, like myself, I would when you talk about the theme of yeah. the conference, I'd sort of tend to jump ahead to the uh, the outward journey very yes. quickly and what the what the Lord's doing and in the earth and that sort of thing. But um, I think you know through that session, the Holy Spirit's just bringing us back to. What's, what's the Lord trying to say in our heart? Yeah, absolutely. Um, because, you know, if we don't, if it doesn't flow from our heart out to others, then really we don't have anything to give. And, yeah. and the Lord's um, wanting us to, to respond. So this arise, I feel even through that first session, the Lord, the Lord calling, calling us forth from, from the heart, from, from within yes. to, um, to respond to God and to respond to his love. Um, it's so good. I, yeah. You know, I, I think it's worth the price of admission just for that. Absolutely, that and Mike, this is the thing. We, you know, the leaders here particularly feel that God wants to to to, to touch people, and so mm. that, as you say, Mike, that was a great mm. talk to start with. We don't want because God says, he, you know, he, he wants to start with us, and He wants you know us yeah. to know. Let's begin with His love for us. Let's begin with that inner mm. journey, mm. and then just look at where we go from that. So, um, yeah. uh, so. Mike, why, 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 don't, why don't we just even pray right now? Let's just pray yeah. again for people through this conference that they would receive that mm. everything, the impartation of God's love. Father, we pray right now for mm. every person through these couple of days, every mm. talk. Father, we ask for mm. waves of your love, waves of impartation of God's love to, to break into people's hearts and lives. We pray that every person would know 
that they're uniquely loved by God, the lavish love of God. And we pray that every talk would build on each other and that we would receive personally what you have for each of us. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Simon. And you've got a few questions in your booklet. Uh, and the idea of that was just to give you an opportunity to reflect on the talk, to maybe have a short discussion together and uh, just to respond, to pray with one another, to, to respond as, as you feel led by the Holy Spirit. So I just encourage you to look at those questions that are in the booklet. And just before we go, Simon, uh, John and Carol Arnott support a charity and we just want to uh, could you just tell us a little yeah, bit about sure. that? Because people may want to support uh, their charity. Okay, well, it's on page 22 of the booklet. This is a charity called Get Missionaries. And if you have, if you, um, their, their plan is to, uh, to prepare and deploy 30 missionary couples this year and to plant a church in this next year, particularly, I think it's into India. But if you, on page 22, there's a charity that John and Carol support and are involved in, and we want to bring that to your attention. And you can find more about that in your booklet. Okay. And so uh, the next session uh, starts at two o'clock this afternoon. Uh, we have uh, Dan Almeida from uh, the Augusta, uh, from the Alleluia community, sorry, in Augusta, mm -hmm. Georgia. And also there's a time of, um, of prophecy and ministry that will uh, follow that talk. So just encourage you to come back at two for that. And we'll just leave you now with the, with the questions, with, some, with your time of prayer and discussion. And yeah, we're just really excited and blessed to uh, continue this journey with you over the next couple of days. So God bless and see you again soon. See you soon.